In the summer of 2024, Earthwatch announced a new volunteer expedition to Kenya's greater Maasai Mara. Earthwatch expeditions blend volunteering and travel to offer unique experiences that support research and conservation worldwide. This expedition is no exception. The project takes place within the NRL Wildlife Conservancy. It leverages traditional ecological knowledge and participatory science to shape the future of savanna restoration. Earthwatch participants will collect data crucial for monitoring the project's long-term impact. They will also support scientists in removing invasive species, surveying vegetation and wildlife, managing a plant nursery, and more. We spoke to scientists leading this project to give you a preview of what to expect on this expedition. Earthwatch participants are going to be working alongside uh, scientists already on the ground and are, uh, are going to be uh, collecting data uh, through the different expeditions with the aim of collecting a certain amount of data throughout the landscape. We're talking about 100 square kilometers landscape, the long-term um, data collected by the, the, the participants will allow us to monitor changes in the landscape. They will also be working here. The participants are going to be a very important workforce, working again alongside staff from from, NERO, from the Conservancy, from members of the community as well. So the involvement of the Earthwatch um, participants is going to be crucial to, to make this project sustainable. There's this concept of traditional ecological knowledge uh, where we get to learn how people have been integrating with this or interacting with the ecosystems over time. And that has happened so many years and so many decades uh, ago. And as you may know, you may know that this is the savanna landscape where humankind uh, or life began. And therefore, people have been here for years, interacting with the ecosystem, managing it, and living, coexist coexisting with wildlife as we know it today. But as Human pressures have been coming, and, and, in, and in very strong measures, we've seen that interaction being affected, and the balance that used to be there is now missing. And to mitigate this, there's, there's a very strong need to come and try to go back or, or bring back that sustainability, which, which is missing. And to do this, uh, there's very strong need, again, to link between modern science or things that have been invented with the changing world, and also uh, linking that with what the community around here has in store as, as a wealth of knowledge. And that means understanding how they used to interact with the ecosystem and means and ways that they used to manage the ecosystem sustainably and linking that with, with science because it's all about data collection okay. and making that uh, evidence-based kind of restoration, which, which has not been very common in most restoration projects. And, and th attaching that scientific concept with, uh, with the local traditional knowledge, making that very, very strong within the restoration project. Also, we've realized that restoration, ecosystem restoration, because we're not trying to go back in time. Mm -hmm. We are trying to recreate uh, what's already happening, given the, the many natural events that are taking place. So, and it's not a one-person job. It cannot be, or even a single organization job, or even a single community work. So... That collaborative effort has been quite had a strong su success, and having participants from world over coming to take part in a in, in a in a project that is quite localized like this one uh, will have a very impact on the mm -hmm. on the long term sustainability of the project. For us, it's all about capacity building, so training, training the across the different demographics of the of the of the population, but also empowering the communities to take ownership of the restoration efforts. Uh, so to feel part of of the project and feel part of the changes that are happening in the landscape because they are already perceiving that there have already been a positive impacts of this restoration project and it's just in, at the very beginning of it. It's an element of transmitting our knowledge yeah. but transmitting as well our ideas. So we would like our participants to go back to their, their home countries and just to spread uh, things that we're doing here the approach that we're taking that um, uh, is possible to have a landscape in which livestock, in which humans and animals and plants are able to to live. Um, sometimes not in harmony. Um, sometimes there will be conflict, 
but still, you know, working together with the communities, mm. not just the scientists in isolations, things might happen.